We're raised in this container that seeks to identify us the minute we're out of the womb. Do you have a penis or not? And if you have a penis, you're a boy, and this is what the prescription is to be a boy. And consequently, in Mormonism, every facet of your maleness is defined for you. You go to primary, and you're immediately indoctrinated in the ideas of go to the temple, and don't touch yourself, and uh, go on a mission, right? Get married, have children. There's no room in the conversation for anything other than a heteronormative, cisgendered identity. And if you're outside of those parameters, at worst, you are unworthy, abnormal. We love you, but don't dare act on any of those things. And so we grow up and we're we're incubated under that idea. And it's just not even in the context of Mormonism because listen to the political rhetoric, the Anita Bryants of our lives, the Jerry Falwells, the Pat Robertsons, right? The, the Bush dynasties, right? That have all uh, uh, promoted an agenda that anything other than the heteronormative norm is to be seen as abnormal, sinful, and undesirable. And as queer people, we grow up under that premise. And at the root of that premise is who we choose to be sexual with and the sexualization of our bodies. And so we begin to adapt the idea and our identity that becomes very focused around our identity as sexual deviants. And so then we use nomenclature like bears, otters, pig sex, top, bottom, right? These, are, these all become ways that we, interesting language that we're using to identify our sexuality and we fetishize it and we, we try to normalize it, but it's all being normalized around that greater narrative that says there's something wrong and disgusting about you. Now, if you contrast that paradigm with how indigenous societies looked at the issues of sexuality, Native Americans before colonization, the notion of God and sex did not exist. Their spirituality was based around an idea of harmony and community. And in the sacred wheel, if you will, the medicine wheel, is the idea that all life is sacred. The mountains, the trees, the desert, the animals, the plants, they're all living beings and they're all in harmony. And it's not a hierarchy, it's a circle we're in relationship with. And that was the context of spirituality. And so if you were not necessarily walking the traditional path of masculinity or femininity, right? We would call that queer. We would call that gay. We would call that lesbian. And yet our native brothers and sisters did not have a language for that but they recognized the value of it. And so those children were kind of turned over to the elders to be taught to honor that medicine, to honor those gifts. And in many cases, those who we call bears and otters and sex pigs, right? They were the sacred people of the tribe. They were the medicine people. They were the ones who took care of the children. They were seen as integral as anyone else in the community, and they were taught to honor it, right? And so how we've been socialized in this culture to see it, and that's not just true of Native Americans. Uh -huh. um, Melodoma Same, who was from uh, West Africa, and part of the Dagara people, in his community, the folks that we identify as gay and lesbians were known as the gatekeepers, 
right? They were the keepers of the traditions and the rituals of the tribe. And Melodoma went as far as to say, the vibrancy and the livelihood of our tribe was dependent upon the gatekeepers. It wasn't an incidental responsibility. It was a responsibility that was critical. And so we have to realize that we've grown up in this construct. A construct is a way of learning, is a paradigm. And just because we were socialized to see ourselves in a particular way does not mean we have to adhere to that and we can reprogram the socialization. We can learn to step into our power. But you're not going to do it on Grinder, or Scruff or at Club Milk, right? Not that those places are bad, but in many ways, they are set up and established in reinforcement of the overall dogma that says you need to, you need to be segregated from normal. And you offer us comic relief because we can laugh with you. You, off, you know, but what is the gift? What is the gift of our sexuality? What is the gift of how we see the world? Not just how we see it physically and sexually, but how we experience and translate the world through our queer lens. What is the gift that we bring to society? See, we're asking all the wrong questions. We're battling history. And I'm talking about how do we create a future that is compatible and feels authentic to what my spirit is calling for. I mean, that's the premise. That's the premise of why we do the retreat is to give people an opportunity to touch that magic.